and you are all set. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Oliver. Appreciate that. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to join us uh, this afternoon. Uh, like Oliver said, uh, my name is Jazz Berman. I'm the regional sales manager here for Enzo Robotics in the West region. And uh, today I'll be doing a presentation on the dual arm control feature uh, that we have with our RC8A controller. So let's get started. Uh, so we'll start with what is dual arm control. So dual arm control is a new feature uh, that enables centralized control of two robots from a single controller. So essentially two arms with one brain uh, and one central control. Uh, this feature allows high speed operation, uh, reduces adjustment time, installation, footprint, also reduces the installation cost, which is key. Uh, for this feature, you do have a license that you need to purchase, the license is required. Uh, compatible robots are our HSA1 series robots and our HSR series robots, and the controller is the RC88. There's a video that does a pretty good job before I get started going into some of the finer details and features of dual arm. And so let's get started there. So as you can see, I mean, it's a very uh, relevant and valuable feature when it comes to any sort of assembly process, uh, especially if you're picking up parts from different locations and assembling them in a shared area. Uh, shared area is another topic I'll discuss as a feature of the dual arm uh, license. Also a number of different uh, collision prevention features avoid any sort of end of arm tooling being in either the same place at the same time or recognizing other features of the robotic cell to avoid collision. Go. So a couple of the key features that uh, that video went over was a smaller installation footprint and uh, lower installation costs. So essentially, since you are controlling both robots from one controller, uh, now in terms of what's the hardware in your control box, you essentially have one controller instead of having two. Um, faster adjustments. So a lot of features uh, in terms of synchronizing and timing multiple robots become difficult and cumbersome when it has two different control uh, systems or two different um, controllers, of course. And so uh, since this one centralized control system, there's a lot of synchronizing that's already built into it. And some of the features that I'm gonna go over, such as exclusive control, uh, exclusive area, cooperative control, and uh, virtual fence will, will highlight why it's easier to, to program off of one controller. Uh, can feel Really be combined with high performance robots. So, as I mentioned, our, our two latest uh, SCARA robots, the HSA1 and the HSA, HSR, are the robots that need to be used with this feature. Um, we do have, if you guys are familiar with our extra axis, uh, if you're using our six axis robots, you still have the freedom to, to use those uh, two additional axes for a total of eight uh, degrees of freedom. Um, so essentially we're utilizing that to run four SCARAs and that's what our dual arm feature essentially is. Um, and it's an expandable functionality to support a wide range of different processes. I'll show you a couple of different videos and a couple of different applications here moving forward on, on where this is helpful. Again, assembly is a key application that this is, this is a productive feature in, uh, but there's a number of other ways to utilize this. Here's a quick schematic showing you how this uh, is kind of set up there from a cabling and, and setup standpoint. So you'll have a RC8A controller and encoder hub, and you'll essentially be able to plug in two robots that way. And it, the way this works is one of them will be operating as the master, and one of them will be operating as the slave. 
Here's uh, some key specs on the two different types of robots. So a number of different options when you come up to the HSR series. And I really want to highlight this robot here, uh, especially when it comes to high acceleration, high speed applications. There's a great video I got coming up uh, showing you the, the different features that allow us to, to get that high acceleration and high speed with the HSR robot. But uh, as you can see from a reach standpoint, you have some different options with that. Uh, 480 millimeters, 550 and 650 millimeters. You also have an eight kilogram payload with that robot. And when you go to the HSA-1, uh, you have a five kilogram payload, and you have 350, 450, or 550 millimeter reach. Uh, both robots have 100 uh, millimeter, 200 millimeter, and 320 millimeter um, Z-stroke option. Uh, the HSA-1 also has a 150 millimeter option. So here's a video that highlights the HSR robot. So initially when this robot was made, we realized that if we used the standard shaft width that you would get some whip and bending in the shaft just based on the ability of this robot to, to accelerate. And so they actually had to thicken the shaft in order to avoid that bending. Also, the design and the material used had to be changed um, to be able to generate that sort of speed. So low weight, high rigidity material. All right, so obviously the key thing we're conveying with the HSR series is speed. And we'll move on to the next slide here. So here are the highlights I want to go over. So with the HSR, just like the video presented, quick acceleration, it, it runs continuously at max speed, stops precisely. Uh, the robot body design op optimizes motor heat dissipation, which allows us to generate that acceleration. Uh, redesigned robot arm to maximize the rigidity of the robot. Um, the HSA-1, I don't want to undermine that robot. It's our ninth generation uh, high-performance high SCARA. So if you guys are familiar with our standard SCARA robots, uh, what we specialize in is high-precision, high high-speed. And so but this is best suited for conveyance and assembly work uh, and uh, high-speed movement in a small installation space. So when you when you use our dual arm control function um, and, and you purchase the license, it comes with a number of different features. That it's also available individually, uh, but I'll be going over cooperative control, exclusive control, and virtual fence features. So with cooperative control, you essentially, and, and again, I'll have a really nice video that highlights what exactly cooperative control is here, but you, it, you look, it, this is a feature which the robots move while keeping uh, relative position to the tool end and, and one another. And you're able to synchronize the motion where if you're using two separate controllers, that, that synchronization process can be pretty tedious. Um, and the timing, the start and end of the robot operation in this, you can easily synchronize. So you'll see in this, so tasks like this where you're either trying to extend the reach of the robot, um, or you're trying to extend the payload of it or do a task that requires something like this where you have to hold it from two different sides and move it in a certain way. Uh, cooperative control gives you great benefits in applications of this sort. As you can see, all four of those robots had to kind of control that motion at the same time.
So exclusive control is the next feature I'll talk about. Um, so exclusive control is a software license that allows you to coordinate moves in a shared area when using multiple robots. So as I touched on a bit earlier, if you have a situation where you're assembling something and, and you're picking up parts from two separate locations and then you, you're assembling them in a shared area, it, it's beneficial to not have both robots in there at the same time. So what exclusive control allows you to do is make sure you can take that area essentially draw a box around it and say, hey, in this area, only one of the robot can be here at a time. It requires a license, and as I mentioned in the parentheses there, it's included when you purchase a dual arm license. And it's an excellent feature to have anytime you're using multiple robots that are sharing an area. So as you can see, that box kind of highlights that there. Um, it allows a simultaneous entry of multiple robots into an exclusive area automatically. Um, this enables the creation of each robot motion without caring about the interlock. Again, this is an RC8A function. Uh, when you're using this, uh, you can use it from anywhere from two to four robots. You'll essentially have one master controller. In a dual arm scenario, this would just be one controller. And then you'll have select controllers as well. This is highlighting different shared areas. It also show you in the video coming up how that's set up in our WinCap software. So, I mean, the way, the way you essentially set this up from a programming standpoint is you have both ro robots in automatic mode. Um, you take robot A out of there and put it into manual mode, put robot B in in automatic mode. And then once the robot B is entered, now it knows, now you can, can kind of set up the sequence of, of when one should be there and when one should. Some key benefits of that are simpler programming, uh, tighter monitoring, removes deadlocks, it uh, also monitors the arm and the end of arm toy. So as mentioned, this video will kind of showcase, uh, as you can see on the bottom left, two robots are moving into shared areas. So this is, in the program you're seeing uh, three separate shared areas or exclusive areas set up. Um, and then finally, virtual fence. So we've discussed sharing an area. We've discussed synchronizing the motion of the, of the robots. Now this is, we want to have a, add a collision prevention function. So virtual uh, fence is exactly that. It monitors target objects, such as the robot, the tools, and the equipment. Uh, and these are all modeled by WinCaps. Again, requires a license, but included with the dual arm uh, license. It's programmed through wind caps and appears as a mesh around the fenced area. So I have some images and a video of that as well. Uh, it stops the robot if anything runs into the fence. And this is a predictive feature that plans the robot path to avoid collision. So again, highlighting virtual fences checks the interference all, all the time, whether in manual mode or in automatic mode. And uh, it's an automatic interference check increases the degree of freedom of the robot installation fire. You'll see right here on the image on the left, there's that green mesh around the robot is indicating how tightly you've packed in that, that virtual fence. So you have an option of how detailed you want to get with that. Um, this one seems fairly detailed, as you can see around the end of arm tooling. It has pretty tight mesh around each one of the features of the end of arm. Some of the key benefits are avoids collision, obviously, during recovery, um, reduces possible downtime due to damaged equipment and ability to know if there's a potential collision before the robot even moves in. This is using our pack script command. There's a video showing primarily exclusive area, but also the collision uh, function is already built in when you're using that since, you know, anytime they're in the same area, only one of them can be there at a time. So the key thing we wanted to go over with the dual arm setup also is cost savings. So a standard two arm robot setup, you purchase two separate robot packages, which are the arm and controller. Um, you also won't get any of the benefits of cooperative control, exclusive area, or virtual fence. Also, typically you'll have additional controls hardware required and programming time, which, which is 
kind of entails a lot of cost there. And then in, in order to get them working together. So total savings just on the hardware itself is about 15% just on Denso hardware. Also, you have to consider you won't need to have additional third-party controls to synchronize that timing. And also, like I said, programming time is key in terms of cost savings there. And that is all I got for you guys on Dual Arm. Um, as you can see, I below there uh, on the bottom, I have a link to any of our future webinars that you can register for. Also, my email address is up there, and I will be following up with everybody uh, shortly with the with the link to this video and recording. And uh, thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jasper. I'm going to go and see if there are any questions. Uh, Jasper put a link on the webinar um, right there, but I also posted it on the chat window to the right. It looks, I double checked and it looks like um, the last webinar is tomorrow. Uh, Paula, Paula, Paula has a question. Go ahead and post your question on um, the Q&A section on the bottom, Paula. Um, so again, with the webinars, tomorrow is going to be the last one for May. Uh, we'll update the webinar link uh, with our June webinars uh, probably sometime late uh, next week or middle of next week. Let's see here. So let's go over the questions. Uh, Luis, Luis said, asked, what kind of PLC can the Denso manipulator be controlled? Uh, Denso robots, Brian said, Denso robots can have command and uh, and controlled by just about any PLC um, via system inputs and outputs. So yes, you can you can connect any PLC to our controller, and um, we'll be able to uh, uh, check out the inputs and outputs on those. Um, let's see here. Paulo asked, how many times does the robot run continuously at max speed? Uh, I. I think our our robots are rated for 10 million cycles or 5 million cycles. Sorry, Brian said 5 million cycles. Uh, and our cycle is defined as one motion from a soft stop to a soft stop. So um, 5 million cycles is what we are rated for. And this, uh, Orlando asked, uh, can the second robot be installed using an existing controller? Yes, so dual arc control um, means that we can control two robots with one controller. Or uh, dual arm control, uh, Brian said, you, only with a dual arm setup, you can use two four axis robots on a single controller, so yes. See any other questions? All right. So it looks like nobody else has any questions. Um, thanks again for joining. Uh, Jasper will do a follow up email for everyone and send the uh, recorded link to everyone for this webinar so you guys can go over that on your own time. Uh, you can send that link to anybody who's interested. Uh, also, please register for our webinar for tomorrow, as well as check uh, in the middle of next week for our updated webinars in, um, in June. And at the end of this webinar, please fill out the survey that we have. It'll be 15 seconds. Just um, tell us which robot you're interested in and um, what, other, uh, what other things that you would like to uh, learn or listen to for any of our future webinars. So. All right, I'll stop this recording and thanks again, Jasper. All right, thanks, Oliver. Appreciate everybody's time and uh, we'll be following up with you soon.